Covering the topic of a healthy mindset is not normally one that I would consider, but these are extraordinary times and so much of what we do in a normal daily to day life has been restricted. This has people feeling stressed and like they have a lack of control over their life and their personal freedom. So much of the things that you do, such as getting a haircut, which I so badly need, going to the movies, hanging out with your friends, hosting social gatherings, all those things have been taken away from us. And if you're trying to make logical investment decisions based on a non-emotional standpoint, which is one of the keys to success, by the way, how can you do that when you feel so overwhelmed by your life in general? I'm gonna give you a few tips that will help you put you back in the driver's seat and make you feel more in control of your life. I'm Anna Hilberry. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Chances are, if you look at your own personal situation, you're probably feeling isolated, frustrated, and like you have a lack of freedom over your day-to-day -day decisions. It's important to remember that social distancing is being done for the greater good and it really is in the grand scheme of things for a short period of time. The good news is there are many parts of your day that you do have control over. I'm gonna give you a few pointers that will help put you in a healthy mindset, make you feel good and like you can tackle the day. And if you feel good and you have control over your emotions, you're more likely to be able to make good, sound financial decisions. I'm gonna go through a few of those pointers now, keeping in mind that I'm not a healthcare professional, and if you're feeling really down in the dumps or feeling low, the best thing you can do is contact your doctor. Step number one, dealing with pandemic anxiety. One of the number one causes of stress right now is watching the news and the constant negativity that you're receiving. It's really easy to get sucked into looking for constant updates or just watching the news all day long. The problem with that strategy is you're constantly being fed negative news. And a lot of it are projections that may or may not take place. Do yourself a favor, set a time limit for how much updating you're going to get, whether it's daily or bi-weekly or even weekly. And then after that, after you've reached your limit, turn off the TV and go do something else. Step number two, be in the moment. There are so many projections that are going on right now, so many what ifs, so many worries that you have about your future. If you focus on that, it's just a negative path to go down. And it's more important to deal with what is in front of you right now. So for example, if you're playing with your children, focus your brain on what you're doing and what you're seeing. If you're out for a walk with the dog or with your family, feel the sun on your skin, the wind on your face, and your feet on the ground. If you focus on all of the what ifs and your worries about the future, it can definitely put you in a negative mindset. It's really important to focus on what you can control, which is what is in front of you right now. Step number three is keeping a regular schedule. That's healthy. It's so easy to get lazy and hang around all day in your bathrobe. Human beings thrive on a regular schedule. We have a circadian rhythm for a reason. Set yourself a healthy schedule, get up on time, get dressed for the day as if you're going in public and go to bed on time. You'll definitely feel better and your schedule is something that you have complete control over. Step number four is your diet. Grocery shopping is probably stressful right now and you're probably off of your regular routine. You may be stress eating or just eating out of boredom. I know I was definitely doing that a couple of weeks ago and then I decided enough was enough and I put my foot down. I had to change things because now I'm eating from home a lot and I have to make my own meals, whereas I used to eat out a lot, but I would make healthy choices. Grocery shopping is stressful right now, so it's important to be strategic, plan it out, try to get some good food in your body. It'll definitely make you feel better. Step number five goes hand in hand with step number four, and that, of course, is exercise. When you're in your funk and you're feeling down, you're really unmotivated to exercise, but it's one of the worst things that you can do, skipping that physical fitness. The Canada Food Guide recommends that youth get 60 minutes minimum of physical activity every day, and adults, including seniors, get a minimum of 150 cumulative minutes of exercise throughout the week. If you're in a small apartment, this might be a little bit challenging, but in 10 minute increments, that's really easy to do. You just might have to be a little bit creative. Stick to your guns, make yourself get up off the couch, get back to exercising because it's one of the number one ways that you can manage anxiety and stress. When you work out, it makes you feel good. 
Step number six, hiring a professional. If you have the extra disposable income and you're struggling with step number four, or maybe you just wanna up your game, hire somebody to help motivate you and give you a professional program. I hired this guy, Don Lamb of DIY Body, based out of Kamloops. He has been virtually kicking my hiney for about a week now. I feel amazing and I am already seeing incredible results. He set me up with a structured, program that was specified to my goals, my needs, the equipments that I have available. And he checks in with me daily, keeps me motivated, and he also keeps me accountable. I feel amazing. He's had amazing results for other family members of mine. Plus, he's totally shredded, so you know he knows how to get results. So if you're struggling, like I said, or you just want to up your game, hire somebody to help you. It is challenging and it gives you something positive to focus on, and it's also something that's completely in your control. Step number seven is staying connected with family and loved ones. You don't have to feel alone. You don't have to feel isolated. Pick up the phone, call people, call your friends, call your family members. You can set up virtual coffee dates with your coworkers, play dates with your kids and their friends where you do a craft together virtually. There's so many different ways that you can connect with people and you know join different groups. Use technology, try something new, get out there and stay connected. In all things in life, in even the most challenging situations, there's always blessings. They, sometimes they're small and you might have to look a little bit harder for them, but they're there. So count your blessings and focus on the things that you can control. I'm Anna Hilbury. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you for listening.